Hey guys, welcome back to Puppet Lauda, and welcome back to Hustle Cat, where everything is fantastic. Um, we're walking back to the cafe, I believe, and everything with Landry has been fixed. So let's see what happens next. I'm walking on the sun, with the stars on my shoulders and the wind in my hair. Or some other complicated metaphor. I don't know, I've been so happy lately, it's great. I mean, work is still work, and mochi's still mochi, but I got a real cute crush I can spend my time with, and I'm starting to get to the bottom of this magical curse thing. Even though the curse has been broken, Landry and I spent most of our time at the cafe. I mean, I had a feeling he'd be spending all his free time at work anyway. He seems like that type. He says it's to earn extra pay uh, for the windows that he blew out on that store. I've offered to help, but he keeps turning me down. I think he's doing the work as some kind of penance. We don't spend all of our time here, of course. Turns out he's got a very nice apartment. I guess Graves is good for something, because it's in great shape. He must have been diligent about keeping it up. I'm glad my curse never developed. I wouldn't want him going through my stuff. We haven't seen Graves about around the past couple of days either way, so I guess it doesn't matter. He's not going to show up while we're cuddling and watching TV or something, right? Who? You know who I have seen? Kaz. He thinks he's sneaky, but yesterday I caught him peeking around the alley at the cafe. I'm sure he'll come in sooner or later. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Right now, I'm more concerned about whether or not Landry's ever going to finish this ramp thingy. It's late and I want dinner. Landry. He doesn't answer. He's in the zone. Landry. Landry! I chant his name like I'm egging him in on a dare. He finally looks up. Huh? Something wrong? I'm hungry. Let's get dinner. <laughs> I'm gonna have a late night here, I think. I might eat something from the kitchen and get back to work. You can stay if you want, but... Nope. No thanks. I gotta go check on Mochi anyway. I'll come over after I'm done, okay? If you don't mind, of course. Of course I don't mind. I'd better get going before Mochi finds his way here instead. <laughs> All right. I give him a quick kiss, mwah, and then gather my stuff and head out. It's way later than I, when I usually leave. Usually the sunset's still peeking through the si city skyline, but tonight the moon's already high. Back home, the crickets would be chirping in full force right now. They get super noisy this time of year. Car noises echoed from the main roads are close enough. I can see Landry's broad back leaning against the cafe window. If he hasn't done in an hour or two, I'll have to come back and drag him out. I hope he's doing this because he wants to, and not because he's still trying to bury himself in work. He seems happier lately, like he's had a weight lifted from his shoulders. Still, I think he feels guilty about breaking the curse before everyone else. I think he's been trying to make it up to everyone else these past couple days. Though I'm not even sure they've figured it out yet. We're gonna tell them soon, of course. I'm not trying to hide it or anything. I just gotta figure out how to break their curses. I hope whatever it takes, is a, it isn't as stressful as Landry's. I don't know if I can take four more magic explosions. <laughs> I think about it for the whole walk home. As I round the corner, I feel a tense, creeping stiffness crawl out my back. Again. My steps slow. My legs are suddenly heavy. This is familiar. Like the feeling I got the other day before I ran into that dude who kept staring at me. It's like someone's breathing down my neck or looming behind me, reading over my shoulder. Is someone following me? I whip around. Just the street. I walk faster. I feel it like growing with every step towards my apartment. Dread hollows a burrow in my stomach. Why do I feel so anxious? I'm just going home. I don't even have far to go. Am I getting sick? Oh. Oh no. It's him. <gasps> Did he find out where I live? Does he live here too? No, that's too much of a coincidence. My limbs freeze. I feel my heart shaking inside my ribcage. My head is swimming. Everything is wrong. I can't place why. Howdy. Um, good evening. Good night. My voice feels small and foreign, like it's thrown by a ventriloquist. I try to beeline for the door, but he sidesteps and blocks my way. Now, now, why the hurry? Won't you answer a couple questions for me, kiddo? His deep, drawling voice is saccharine venom. 
He puts on a smile, but it's certainly not one that puts me at ease. Uh, do you need directions? You seem lost. I can't keep the tremor out of my voice. He notices. Oh, ain't you smart? Right to the point. Why, yes, I am lost. But I ain't looking for a place. Ah, I found that. Looking for a guy. Think you can help? Uh, I'm pretty new to the city. I probably can't. I reckon you can. Suppose I shouldn't mince words. You're a busy person. I'm already feeling guilty wasting your time. I'm trying to hunt down graves. You seen him? Uh, is he a friend? He can't be. He feels... See, I've been looking all over for my old buddy and it's like he don't exist. Ain't that a shame? Oh, y yeah, I haven't seen him recently either. Anger flashes over his face like an eclipse, vanishing as quickly as it come. <laughs> Too bad. We got so much to talk about. I suppose his apprentice will do. That'll send a message. Intent reaches my feet before it hits my ears. I'm running before I know it. I'm not dumb enough to stick around and find out what he means by send the message. I don't look behind to see if he's following. That would slow me down. I have to get to the cafe. I just have to run like I'm being chased, even if I'm not. Ping! I hear a sharp noise behind me, like a metal bat hitting a home run. My foot gets stuck. On what, I don't know. But it hits the ground and stays there. The force knocks me over and twists my ankle in a way that shocks pain up my leg. I'm seeing stars and I want to crawl away. But I can't. I'd have gotta speak to Graves about your manners. Didn't even excuse yourself. What a rude little kitten. I look down. My foot is covered in rust. Rust? His movement is molasses, like he's enjoying a stroll through the park. I crane my head over my shoulder to see him, but it's hard from this angle. If you'd been polite, we wouldn't need to fight. Didn't want to hurt you, kitten. I only need a couple answers. But if you want a duel, I can't complain. Promise you won't run away, yeah? I won't play dirty if you don't. I don't think I could break this rust without breaking my ankle off. It feels like it's already broken. Tears sting my eyes. I can barely use my magic to make trash sculptures. How am I supposed to use it to fight? I'm doomed. You haven't changed a bit, Nashed. Still pushing around the weak to excuse your own maleficence. I've never been so happy to hear my boss's voice. Graves! Graves will know what to do. I know it. <laughs> and here you come, acting like you ain't got anything to do with it. Gonna get me all nostalgic, old man. From out of nowhere, Graves is already next to me. He kneels down and places my ha his hand on my foot. What's he holding? Are you hurt? Don't move. This may burn a little. A sensation washes over my rusted foot like stepping in a puddle of battery acid. Well, maybe that's a bit extreme. It burns, but it doesn't hurt. Rust crumbles to the dust, and I'm free. I flex my ankle. It doesn't feel great, but at least I can put weight on it now. Graves stands between- <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> Graves stands between me and Nasht. With a flourish only Graves can accomplish, he pulls a sword from his cane. What a perfect weapon for him. Nash subs his hand in his pocket and rests on his metal bat like a cane, just standing there, waiting. How are you now? Can you stand unassisted? Yeah, thanks. Who is that? If you call that bike in the alley. Oh, I almost forgot. The one that was rusted over? The one Graves told me not to touch? This is why? Meet the source of our collective woes. Ah, oh, come on now. And after all we've been through together. Avery, I don't imagine this will end well. I have a favor to ask. Whatever you need, boss. He drops the cane sheath and takes my hand. His eyes are fierce, fire and ice staring into mine. I feel like I shouldn't blink. I give it to you. All of it. Take care of it for me, Avery. It, what? All of what? Everything. Everything of mine. You'll understand. Now go, as fast as you can. Go to the cafe. You'll be safe there. What was that all about? I don't feel any different. Why are you dawdling? Go! Oh, God. I, I, 
I don't. Uh. All right, let's let's run. Don't you worry, kitten. I'll catch up. Ha! Not just where it's haunt me as I run as the best I can on my sore ankle. It hurts with every step, but I can't stop. I almost make it to the cafe before I have to stop. My ankle hurts more with every step. I can't do it anymore. I see the lights as I approach. Landry's still here. I hope. It's only then that I realize I have no idea what his number is. I never had to call his cell or anything. Crap, crap, crap. I gotta do something to get his attention. I have to stop for a breather. I lean against the old vending machine and then I get an idea. I have enough change for a sto soda. I scoop it up before it hits the bottom of the machine. I give it a good shake and focus all my magic into it. I lob it as hard as I can towards the cafe. I know it's not going to reach the door. I'm not that athletic, but that's what I need it to do. The can hits the ground and explodes with a pop. Sparks fly like illegal fireworks. It worked. I was worried I wasn't going to make a Carl for a Molotov cocktail. Landry notices and comes out to investigate. Thank God Notch didn't get here first. What the heck? Is this a prank? Cuz, is that you? Landry! Avery? What the heck? I need your help. I twisted my ankle. Someone's coming. What? Avery, oh my gosh. He bounced towards me, covering the distance between us in no time at all. You okay? Did you slip or something? Never mind that. Help me inside. Hurry. He's coming. Wh who's coming? I mean it. Hurry. It's notched. Uh, okay. He effortless he effortlessly lifts me into his arms. I wrap my hands around his neck and he hurries back into the cafe. I could get used to this. I'll ask him to pick me up some other time under better circumstances. But now is not the time for that. I wrap my arms tighter around him. Avery. Avery. Can't breathe. Oh, oh, sorry. I let go and he gently sets me on the couch. He's already fussing over my ankle. I'm so glad you're still here. I don't know what I would have done if he caught up. If who caught up? Were you being chased? Yeah, I- this guy, Nash, he attacked me, and Graves- and Graves fought him off, and so I ran. He's the one who hurt you? I feel static run up my spine. I think it's from Landry. The light goes out of his eyes. Oh, he's mad. I didn't mean that metaphorically, there's actual literal static crackling off of him. He's like a lightning rod when he's mad. I can feel the hairs on my neck raising. Hope the windows hold out. I twisted my ankle trying to get away. I mean, I guess it got- I got it caught in his magic. I don't know. Oh crap, I should not have said anything about magic. He's already halfway out the door. No, Landry, come back. Graves will take care of it. I don't want you getting hurt too. This is like talking to an electrically charged brick wall. I'll go see what's happening. Will you be okay here? No, just stay here. I don't want to be alone. Please, Landry, come sit down with me. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, I got worked up. Let's just, let's just stay here for a bit. I just want to lock the door and take a few minutes to catch my breath, okay? Yeah, you're right. At least he's calmed down enough to stop crackling. I'll get the door. Nah, let me. I want to try my foot again. Holy crap, now that I've had a few minutes to let everything catch up, my ankle hurts like hell. I try to hobble to the door, but it flies open before I have the chance. I ready myself to find a murderer armed with a bat, but it's... F Finley? You guys! Oh my god, the curse! She grabs my hands and does a little dance, but stops when I wince in pain. Oh, sorry, sweetie. You okay? Did you twist your ankle? Yeah. What's this about the curse? It's broken! We're all human again! Of course I'll miss my jelly donut fame, but I'll live. Ooh, and I'll start a new vlog. I... What's wrong? You look real messed up about it. It's Graves. The curse must have broken because something happened to him. Graves! What happened? Where is he? And suddenly, everyone is here. The curse must have broken for everyone at once. This should be good news, but... Oh, Reese! It's bad. He's still out there, I think. Still out there? Where? He lunges, but Mason intercedes. Stop. He's injured. What happened to him? You have to tell me what happened. Someone attacked us. I have no idea who he was, but he had a grudge against Graves. His name was Nashed, I think? I don't know who that is! What happened then? This Nashed guy, I think, 
He beat Graves. Reese clutches at his chest. He looks like he might fall over and pass out. I reach out to ease him to his seat, but he swats me away. I knew it! I knew he was going to get in over his head. I knew another witch was on his tail, but he told me to stay out of it. Damn it! I could have helped! Why didn't he let me help? Reese sinks into the couch and slams the armrest with his fist. Beating on furniture isn't going to do anything, but if that helps him feel better. He sinks his fingers into the cushion and looks hard at the floor. His eyes gloss over. He's holding back tears with everything he's got. I feel really bad. For all his blustering, Reese admired Graves a lot. I think he was the only one of us who really did. I guess now, after Graves saved me like that, I kind of do too. Too little too late, I suppose. So, now what happens? What do we do? We avenge him, of course. We kill Nasht. Whoa, whoa! That's a bit extreme. All's fair in a duel. If that's what this guy wants, that's what he gets. When he comes for the cafe, I'll take it back from him. Comes for the cafe? Why would he do that? When a witch defeats another in a duel, they take the loser's property. But he'll have to beat me to get it. Is Graves really dead? I don't know. If Nash's intent was to kill him... Damn it. Landry no, it looks like he's about to go off again. I grab his hand and give it a good squeeze. He starts to back to, he starts back to himself. I know. I know what you're going to say. Sorry. No, I think you're right this time. This magic is dangerous, and I think we're in over our heads. Hayes readies himself with wide eyes, his mouth pursed, like the conversation is a game of double dutch played with live wires. What is it? Uh, uh, why does everyone keep talking about magic? Was Graves cursed too? He must have been, right? It all sounds so unreal still. Are you sure it's magic? Of course it is! How else would this be happening? But he was too strong to get cursed! That part was just us! But he wasn't too strong not to curse us. Does that matter now? He's gone! And this Natch is gonna be here to take everything else too! He spits the name like it's profane. <laughs> Reese launches himself from the chair and storms to the door. He puts his hand in his pocket like he's concealing a weapon. How would he just take the cafe? That's not how property works. There are like deeds and stuff. Not that I know much more about that, but I'm pretty sure my parents didn't just kill a witch to buy their house. Of course it's more complicated. I don't exactly have time to explain witch territories. I just know that when you're defeated in a duel, you give your property to the winner. So unless Graves gave it away before a fight, Natch owns the cafe now. I remember Graves grabbing my hand and staring through me. I remember his words. I think he did. What? Before he fought, before he told me to run away, he told me that he gave everything to me. You? Why you? You're a newborn baby stumbling through the witching world. That's not fair. You can't handle it. Well, maybe we're jumping to conclusions here. I think some of us should go find out what happened. Maybe it's a coincidence the curse broke? I really don't think it would be. But still, we're giving up on graves too quickly when we haven't seen proof for ourselves. We should confirm. Reese, would that make you feel better? If on a slim chance you were right, obviously. And if not... Landry and Reese seem so ready to fight. I'm a bit worried for them. Why don't you come with me? Nobody should go out alone. We can watch out for each other. You read my mind. What if Nash is already on his way here? What do we do? He can go through me. She cracks her knuckles and positions herself in front of the door. Wow, I'm so glad to have all of these bruisers on my side. He said he'd come after me. What if he's waiting in my apartment? What about Mochi? Don't worry, kiddo. I can rescue your kitty. Give me your key. I'll be out and back before you know it. What? No, it's too dangerous. You can't do it. I've played all those stealth games. You have no idea how good I am at sneaking. Guys... I'm just some screw-up kid. You don't have to do this for me. Of course we do. Yeah! You're our screw-up kid. We stick together through thick and thin, us cursed cats. Tears of gratitude sting my eyes. I never thought I'd have friends like this, who'd endanger themselves for me. My high school friends would have run off the moment someone said curse. I love these guys. I vigorously scrub my face. Don't want to get too mushy. I hobble back to the couch. Okay, we can do this, right? 
Yeah! Promise me nobody's gonna get hurt, okay? Please, give us more credit than that. Yeah! This guy will be sorry if he underestimates us. Then we enact our plans. Reese, Landry, and Finley all head out together. It's so weird to see them walk away from the cafe as humans. Hayes vanishes into the bathroom for the first aid kit. Mason dips into the kitchen, and I hear a horrific screeching noise, like metal against linoleum. What is she doing? She returns triumphantly. She smirks at me, or more accurately, at the dumb gawking face I'm making. Blocked the door. With what? An industrial range? She gives me a self-satisfied smirk, then paces in the front of the front door, like in the windows like a sentry. Oh my god, who needs magic? She can snap that natch guy in half of their hands. Hayes is backed with the bandages and a bag of ice. Gingerly, he removes my shoe and rolls up my pant leg to get a better look at the ankle. I'm glad I'm wearing socks that don't have holes. Oof. My ankle doesn't look great, but it could be a lot worse. I don't think it's sprained. Just twisted. You just need rest. He slowly, neatly wraps my ankle with one of the stretchy bandages. When he pens it in place, it's like a pro's work. A professional ankle wrapper? Do you know a lot of first aid, Hayes? You're way calmer than I expected. Uh, I studied in scouts. Injuries and things don't bother me. Never have. Not everything makes me feel anxious. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm glad you're here to patch me up. He smiles sheepishly, but averts his gaze to the ground towards the ice pack. He props my foot up one of those pig puffy ottomans and places the ice on my ankle. Oh my god, does that feel good. Now, just keep it elevated and rest a little, and take the ice off in 20 minutes. Thanks again, Dr. Hayes. Uh, I'm gonna make some coffee. I think everyone will need it. I stress nap once Hayes goes back upstairs. Sometimes, I need a system shut down before I can think straight again. And I think even cats know something's up, because they all swarm me. I've got two on my lap, and the others pile around me. It's soothing to hear them and feel their little paws stretch out at me. I hope it's helping them, too. Not that I sleep well. Every time I start to nod off, I spook myself with some new horrific way that Notch could defeat Landry. I hope he's okay. I hope he didn't do anything stupid. My heart hurts thinking about it. And we're gonna stop here. This is crazy. Oh my god, what a fucking mess. Uh, Notch is the scariest villain. <laughs> He's not the scariest, but he's he's definitely not fun. Um, we're gonna see if he shows up at the cafe, I guess, in the next episode. Drama. Whew. 